Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eve and this is Eve Saskia Creative. Um, today coming to you with a slightly weird video because it came to my attention that my fiancé doesn't understand that women can have different kinds of anger. <laughs> um, so I think his general concept is that I am cross. What he doesn't understand is the levels of cross that I can be for different things. There are some kinds of cross that are not serious in any way and if anything are just a joke and there are some kinds of cross where I'm legitimately really angry and what he was saying to me was that he didn't understand because he is either cross or not cross <laughs> that women have multiple different layers, a spectrum of anger and all of them mean slightly different things and should be handled accordingly. So I thought I would make a handy guide, public servant as I am, for the men in the audience who may also be struggling with this issue, and for the women who just wanted a laugh and a relatable moment. So without further ado, here we go! So this is 10 ways a woman can be cross, and the first one is anger. This is crossness in its purest form, and it usually means you've done something wrong and she is obviously annoyed about it. It's an easy one to handle. Usually you let it blow up, you apologize and you move on. Nice and easy. Now for each of these, I'm going to give a small example that we may see in popular culture. So for this one, I have gone with Chandler and Monica have a bad weekend. On their romantic weekend away, Chandler is far more focused on catching up with the latest sporting television and Monica is exasperated by that. She is also clearly stressed and upset by all of their rooms and has to keep switching up and getting a different room. Chandler is becoming more frustrated by this, he just wants to watch the game. Monica is determined to have a perfect romantic weekend. Chandler, at one point, possibly crosses the line. Let's see. Okay, this one I like. Nothing. Nothing. It's over. Damn it. This is regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> can we turn the TV off? Okay, do, do we really want to spend the entire weekend like this? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I getting in the way of all the room switching fun? <laughs> Don't blame me for going tonight. Well, who should I blame? The nice bellman who had to drag our luggage to ten different rooms? Oh, I don't know. How about the idiot who thought he could drive from Albany to Canada on a half a tank of gas? <laughs> do not speak ill of the dead. We're supposed to be spending a, a romantic weekend together. It, it, what is the matter with you? I just want to watch a little television. What is the big deal? Jeez, relax, Mom. <laughs> what did you say? So we can see that he is clearly prioritizing watching sporting television over spending quality time with Monica, something which she is annoyed about. This is a small transgression, let's say. It is not a cardinal sin, but it is something that she's probably not going to be particularly happy about, and if I was in the same position, I would probably react the same way. Let's see how they resolve it. So that weekend kind of sucked, huh? Yeah, it did. So, I guess this is over. What? Well, you know, you and me. I mean, it had to end sometime. Why, exactly? Because of the weekend. We had a fight. <laughs> Chandler, that's crazy. <laughs> if you give up every time you have a fight with someone, you'd never be with anyone longer than... Oh. So, this isn't over? <laughs> you were so cute. <laughs> no, no, it was a fight. You deal with it and you move on. And as you can see, they resolve this one like adults. Neither of them actually apologized because in this sense they both kind of did something wrong. She was far too focused on the room being perfect, he was far too focused on the sports TV and they lost sight of their relationship. And I think, had it just been Chandler's transgression in this instance, I can understand why he may have needed to apologise, but given that both of them were in the wrong, it's nice that they were able to just examine this together and move on. Okay, type two is enraged. This is anger, but taken much further along the spectrum into real rage. Now. This probably also means you've done something wrong. It's a reaction to something that has happened and it tends to be something that was 
more along the lines of a public humiliation, something that she really wasn't expecting and, and has caught her off guard. Now you probably won't have any control over whether or not this blows up and it more than likely will blow up and it might blow up very publicly, particularly if the humiliation was a public one. The only way you can really deal with this is to have a cool off period, to both go off in your separate directions and to come back together when you're both feeling a little bit more rational. Quite often these involve a display of mild violence. So we see this really well illustrated in um, Sex and the City the movie, where Big has publicly humiliated Carrie by not turning up to their wedding and she hits him with her bouquet. Let's check that out. Carrie, I freaked out for a minute, but I'm ready now. I am humiliated! I'm sorry. Sorry, Come on. So as you can see, Carrie is incredibly emotional, incredibly volatile. He's clearly caught her completely off guard with his betrayal and she is having a very public, very emotional reaction to it. So that's enraged. Number three on the spectrum of women being cross is exasperated. This is one that we feel commonly. <laughs> Um, it usually means you have engaged in an activity or behaviour that you do frequently, but of which she disapproves. So, for example, this was the kind of crossness which sparked this conversation between me and my fiancé. He had, in my opinion, double booked himself with two social engagements. He was suggesting that he'd be able to make both of them. It involved him having a very stressful day, and therefore I was slightly exasperated that he hadn't just cancelled one or the other. Now, the way to handle this behaviour is to decide how important it actually is in the relationship. Now, for me, it wasn't particularly important. It's not my day that's going to be difficult, it's his. So I was merely pointing out that it probably wasn't that helpful that he had booked himself two social occasions right next to each other in different locations. Um, however, if he wants to live his life that way, that that's absolutely fine, it doesn't affect me negatively, um, and therefore it's not really important to the relationship. We'll examine one now, and we're going back to Monica and Chandler and Friends again for this example, um, of Chandler has engaged in uh, behaviour, smoking, which he frequently does, and which upsets Monica, and she is exasperated by the behaviour because she just wants him to stop. She doesn't understand why he can't just not smoke and we'll see the fight that ensues. How can you smoke in this day and age? Have you not seen that ad? Huh, where the little kid walks through Grandpa? It's chilling. <laughs> I messed up. It was a meeting. Everybody was smoking. So what? Don't you have any willpower? Willpower? I've watched home movies of you eating ding-dongs without taking the tinfoil off. <laughs> you said that was sexy. So as you can see, this is clearly her having a massive blow up at him because of a behaviour that he continuously exhibits. Now, I would argue that until the smoking impacts her directly or their children directly, it is kind of up to him whether he smokes or not. You can, you can argue that you don't want your partner to smoke, but it's them who has to make the decision to stop. You can't be the person to force them to stop to force your will. And as you can see by what Monica says... Can we just drop this? I'm not gonna smoke again. That's right, because I forbid you to smoke again. You forbid me? Mm-hmm. She's kind of trying to force him, and that's never the way for the woman in the relationship to handle this kind of problem. Basically, you both need to talk about the issue, decide how important it is for you, and work from there. So the next way a woman can be angry is when she is disappointed. This is the classic, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed, which in some ways can be more scathing than anger. Now this is very similar to exasperation, which we talked about before, it's just on a much more intense level. So again, it's you have engaged in a behaviour that she expected of you, but hoped that you wouldn't. So it's the kind of thing where she may have expected that you had grown and developed beyond this sort of behaviour and then in the cold light of day has seen that you're still engaging in it. And this is usually something far more serious. I'll show you the example now, which is of Mark Corrigan and Dobby in Peep Show. And when Mark's family come around for Christmas, Mark is not really sure he wants to tell his family that he's in a relationship with Dobby at this point. 
Dobby obviously wants him to let them know because, well, she's there and part of the relationship, so kind of part of the family um, by extension. So she's trying to encourage Mark to tell his family and then this moment happens. Cauliflower is not traditional, Dad. Cauliflower is traditional! I don't know if it really is traditional, actually. Could you not slip a muzzle on your woman, please, Mark? I notice I'm not saying anything. Ah, uh, still not saying anything? Nothing coming? You'll have to excuse me. Thank you. This has all been horrible. So, as you can see, Mark has really put his foot in it in this instance. And it's a behaviour Dobby had expected of him. She is aware that his family are kind of scary and that he will probably just lie down and take it. Therefore, she's not enraged. She's not immediately angry. Um, but she is disappointed in him for that behaviour. Um, the way to handle this usually, particularly if it's a really bad behaviour and you know you're in the wrong, is to acknowledge it, to say, I'm sorry, I, I realised that I was doing this behaviour that I know that you had hoped that I had grown out of or you hoped that I had put behind me and I'm really sorry that I did that. It's to acknowledge it, to acknowledge her annoyance and her kind of upset about the issue and then to apologise, generally. Okay, the next one is a weird one, which is empathy rage. Empathy rage is where one of your partner's friends tell you off for her. <laughs> um, whether asked to or not, and in the instance I'm going to show you... Yeah, no! Right. No! Probably not. <laughs> Charlotte's a really good example in Sex and the City because she is a ferocious friend and she... There's a couple of instances where she has a go at Big after he betrays Carrie, and um, you can see it also in this next clip. I don't want to see you! I'm so mad at you! I was always on your side! Did you go and you do that to Carrie? No! No! I'm not gonna cry! I'm not gonna waste tears on you! I cursed the day you were born! So women generally can be very protective of their friends and particularly if they have a big group of girls they can all be quite close knit and if you are out with one of them you're out with all of them. So it can be a little bit tricky to navigate. I think the main thing is this is not a good medium of communication particularly when it doesn't actually affect the person who's telling you off. Um, if you can just try and get out of that conversational loop. Do not speak through a proxy to your partner it never works out well for anyone. So that's the empathy rage. Okay, the next one is betrayal. And this usually is similar to rage, but tends to involve infidelity. Obviously the clip I'm gonna use for this one is Ross and Rachel, because it's like one of the most famous betrayals in film and TV history. And without further ado, here it is. Just get away no, from it me. It was a mistake. I made a mistake, okay? A mistake? What were you trying to put it in? Her purse? Ross, you had sex with another woman. You know what? I want you to leave. Get out of here. Just no, get out no, now. No, I know. I want to stay. I want to talk about this. Okay. All right. How was she? So, <laughs> plenty wrong with the way Ross handles this. Um, the kind of rage that Rachel is feeling now is not going to be abated within that conversation. You are never going to win that conversation. If you have cheated on your partner or done something akin to cheating on your partner, you are never going to get out of it in that first conversation that you have where she finds out. It's just a non-starter. The best thing is to take some time, give her some time, let it kind of blow over and take a little bit of a step back. If she wants you to communicate with her and she's open to discussion, then that's different. But in the state that Rachel's in, in this clip, Ross is never going to win that argument and he just keeps putting his foot in it by trying to explain and excuse his action. You think you're going to get out of this on a technicality? Look, I'm not trying to get out of anything, okay? I thought our relationship was dead. Well, you sure had a hell of a time at the wake. Which, frankly, is there an excuse for infidelity? I would argue probably not. So that's my take on the betrayal. 
Okay, number seven is going to be a little bit controversial, and that's because it involves being hormonal, and it's very dangerous to accuse a woman of being hormonal, particularly if the reason why she's fighting with you is not because she's hormonal. So it's a very, very cautious place to tread. Um, this one I refer to as being fighty. This is what we refer to it as in my relationship. We call it being fighty. Um, it applies to me, and it usually applies to three days of my menstrual cycle particularly. Um, this is where you, you're never going to win an argument. So we all know that in the menstrual cycle there are a few days where your hormones tank, and that means that you generally are more volatile and a little bit perhaps unreasonable. I certainly am. I have like three days a month where for some reason I just seem to pick a fight with my partner and I feel like that's not the best way to handle things but when you're hormonal sometimes your vision is clouded and you're particularly sensitive to being told that you're being hormonal so that's why we call it being fighty. It doesn't put a label on it as like, oh, you're just being like hysterical or hormonal, all these words that kind of belittle your feelings, um, but it is still in that ballpark. So I'm going to use an example again from Friends, because there are just so many great examples of relationship dramas in this series, um, of Rachel being overdue when she's pregnant. And this is a great clip. Come on, people, please let's make some room. Uh, sweetie, maybe you'd be more comfortable here. <sighs> you. <laughs> like you haven't done enough. So as you can see, Ross has not done anything wrong, <laughs> unusually. Um, actually, he is trying to be supportive and be there for her. She is livid because she is overdue, uncomfortable, very, very just sort of aggravated, and it's also hot. So nothing that is going on is actually to do with anything that Ross has done. Um, she is just already angry, and therefore any conversation that he tries to have with her is going to end in an argument, basically. This is where you just have to step back and give her space. Oh, God, get out! Get out, get out, get out! <laughs> <laughs> or if it's you know those three days of the menstrual cycle where she's feeling particularly vulnerable and not that happy you know do something nice for her that tends to be a, a real winner particularly in this situation where you're feeling like the whole world's against you either be nice to her or give her some space i think that would be my argument otherwise all her rage is going to be directed at you finish this Pinky okay, number eight I don't have an example for. Um, it's being strategically angry. I'm glad there aren't many examples of this because it is kind of a gaslighting and manipulative behaviour. Really sorry if you can hear my neighbour playing the drums. <laughs> so this is where you might try to use a past wrong to influence the current situation. So say you want something from your partner, you might say, oh, well, there was this time where you did this. I mean, the again, the obvious example is um, Ross and Rachel constantly reminding each other of the on a break, not on a break situation. It's a classic example of a really unhealthy relationship, of constantly bringing up things that people have done in the past to use against them currently. This is a kind of anger that you shouldn't engage with because it's not real anger, it's actually manipulation. And if your partner does that to you, because we do all sometimes fall into the trap of using tactics like this. If your partner does this to you, I think the best thing to do is just to call it out straight away and say that you're not happy with that kind of behavior. Otherwise it becomes a precedent. So that is strategic anger. Okay, the next one is bickering, and that again is not real anger at all. Sometimes a woman might come across as though she's being really aggy with you and really sort of unhelpful and unfriendly, and actually it's kind of a flirtation or a bickering kind of tactic to kind of figure out what your relationship is and where you stand and how far you can push each other. It's a form of play fighting, in my opinion. So that's bickering, and my favourite example is Chuck and Blair from Gossip Girl. I feel like their entire relationship centres around bickering for about two seasons, so here they are. Ow! <gasps> Who, what, when, where, why? 
were up late plotting against Georgina. We must have dozed off. And you were on the floor. I didn't want to hurt my back. Why? It's not like you ever do anything athletic. Well, that's not entirely true now, is it? Fine. Nothing that requires removing your scarf. It was one time. It was chilly. The best way to deal with this is just to match her in her flirty arguing, if you feel the same way about her, um, is to kind of push each other's boundaries a little bit, not too far, but just, you know, have that play fight, play out the scenario, see what it feels like, and move on with that. The final one is probably the most frustrating one, and that is the I'm not angry. Everybody has had this happen to them where a woman, because it's usually woman behaviour I would say, just a generalisation, will say, no, I'm fine, I'm absolutely fine, um, nothing wrong at all, when you can clearly tell that the opposite is true. And the best way to deal with this is firstly to figure out what it is that you did. Um, I would say usually it's pretty obvious what you did, but sometimes you might have to do a little bit of digging. And if that does involve just saying, look, I can see there's clearly something going on, um, could you help me out with that? Um, that's probably the first way. I think sometimes with this one you might have to do a bit of groveling because she is pretending she's fine, she's putting on a front. The idea is that it's a little puzzle for you to figure out. So what you do is you basically figure it out, you apologise. If that doesn't work, you might have to do a little bit of groveling and we will watch a scenario now where this happens. I'm sorry I yelled. It's I, fine. No, but <laughs> you're, you're mad. I'm not mad. No, I'm just not going. You're not going. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know that I, I have to go, mm -hmm. right? So is it going to be like I'm abandoning you while you're upset? No. No, because you're not upset right. about the yelling. Right, and the humiliating. Well, well, of course, the humiliating. <laughs> what can I do to show you how, how, much, how much I want you to be there? You could drink the fat. <laughs> All right, welcome to an adult conversation. <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That actually, uh, that sounds interesting. What? I think you should drink the fat. Cheers. <laughs> no, 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 okay, okay, don't, I'll go, I'll go. You will? You were really gonna do that, weren't you? Well, yeah. You were gonna drink the fat. <laughs> so I'm not saying you have to do anything as dramatic as drinking a cup of fat, but it, sometimes in this scenario, she is playing hard to get deliberately with her kind of emotions. She's trying to distance herself from you and therefore you might have to do a little bit of cozying up to her. She wants you to work for it. That's why she's telling you there's nothing wrong when you can clearly see there is. It's a game. And unfortunately, sometimes that's the way we express ourselves as women. Um, I'm sure men do it too, but I can only speak from personal experience. So those are my 10 types of female anger. If you can think of more, let me know in the comments. I know this might get people saying that this is sexist. It's just a bit of fun. So, you know, please don't at me in the comments. I understand that not everyone can be shoehorned into these categories. My fiance thought this was actually really helpful. So, I don't know. I hope it helps some other people. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, if you like my content, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time.